So if, if something is named Color Burst, how many of us are going to want that? It was a no-brainer, but this is interesting stuff. I touched on it in yesterday's video, and um, I once they were out, I, I had to play. So I have uh, these come in primaries of ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, and alizarin crimson, and secondaries, violet, orange, and phthalo green. So um, we're going to use a little watercolor paper. I'm also going to try them on 110 pound cardstock. I'm going to try them with heat embossing and with pigment inks today. So I'm basically going to do a couple trial runs um, and see how they go. Okay, so I'm using the, the um, heat embossing as a resist. So um, basically any resist would work. I just chose to uh, do this. So I've learned that no matter how much this little bag disappears on me, I have to hunt it down before heat embossing anything. It's an anti-static bag. So I learned that during my foiled again class. <laughs> it's a valuable lesson. Okay, so to ink up this very cool uh, compass stamp that I borrowed from a friend, so I want to use it before I return it. I'm taking, I always take the pad to the stamp. I think that's your best bet. And I am using a plastic mount. I'm thinking I'm going to put this down low in the corner. So press it on there good. That's a Versamark ink is a sticky ink that will allow the embossing powder and I'm using WOW Opaque White Embossing Powder, regular. It's not super fine or anything. Um, okay, so what you do is you sprinkle that. I, I understand that you probably aren't going to see much of this, but let me see if I can get you to. Can you see? Yeah, you can see. White on white. Perfect for videos. Okay, so I'm just going to funnel this powder back into this. And here's a tip of the day from the uh, card makers on YouTube who are pretty awesome. Um, take a piece of Swiffer and when you have either that glitter or embossing powder, it really cleans it up quick. This is um, pretty brilliant. So I can put that away now and pull out my heat gun and I'm gonna let this heat up for a minute. Keep on heating. This is a really beautiful stand. Susan, if you're watching, thanks for the loaner. Jeez, I think I'm going to have to use that stamp a lot. Of course, you can't really see it, but you're going to. I think I'm going to do warms. I'm going to do um, red and orange. Now, remember, this is going to really create mud. Where's my, well, here's, here's Pam Characters. Um, business card and uh, you don't want red and green okay that's going to make mud so look look at your color wheel and stay with analogous in the same neighborhood colors okay so what I'm going to do here is is make what I love to do best, a big mess, a big colorful mess. Okay, so I just sprayed, that's just plain old water. I just sprayed plain old water onto my craft mat. If That's probably way more orange than I need. It's going to probably make like two dozen cards or journal pages or what have yous. Art tags. I probably have like ten times the amount of, ooh, so did you see that? Okay, so we got it. We got it going on here. Okay, so I'm just going to dip it in there. Of course, it's still warm. It's like bakery bread. Oh, my heavens, is that gorgeous or what? Okay, so, I mean, the color is so intense, and the embossing really 
really is just standing out like crazy. I'm looking forward to seeing how the pigment ink will work on top of this. So you can see how that's working there. Okay, I'm just making it run a little bit. And I'm going to pick up some more and some more. I really like leaving white space in my watercolor because if you get too much, um, you know, it just kind of overwhelms. And it's really nice to have something. Definitely want darker where that compass is. Sorry, I interrupted myself. You like to have something, some place for your eye to rest. I could probably go in to this. I'll have to see if these react. If they, um, I'm just going to put right here. Now see, they puff out. You have to kind of figure out where they're going to land when they puff out. And you probably can't see it, but it definitely puffed out. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for a while and just sort of let it do its thing. Just let it do its thing. I wonder what will happen if I put some blue in there. I know it's going to happen. It's going to make it brown. But you know what? I'm feeling rebellious today, so I'm going to do it anyway. You see how dark that got? Ooh. If it makes it gray, you know what? That's quite all right with me, actually. All right. I'm going to set this aside and let this dry, and we'll get started on the other card. Okay, here I have a great big 12 by 12 stencil, um, but that's okay. I only have a little tiny piece of cardstock. I'm going to just, um, I'm going to put a little bit of removable tape on the back of this um, because I want a stencil, but I'd like it to be somewhat. This is, this is uh, one of Ken Oliver's ideas from his thing. So I'm just going in there with water, plain old water. And now I got to decide, do I want to go blue green or blue violet? What mood am I in today? I think I'm in a blue violet mood today. I wish you guys could talk back. Okay. So, so cool. I mean, you know what? This is like better than going to the movies. Now I got a big splunge of splunge of purple there. Oh. God, that is just so beautiful. Thank you, Ken Oliver. You know what I'm gonna do? I am going to grab another piece of paper. I got a ton of dividend uh, papers and I can see from my craft sheet that I'm going to get a bunch more. So let me just pull this off and see what we wound up with in terms of a stencil. Yeah, there was a lot of leaking. Now, I think I probably used way too much water, but you know what? That's okay. Um, you know, in fact, that's really cool. I'm going to go and uh, let that let that dry. I'm just going to try that stencil one more time and see if it works. I've got a smaller stencil here. There's already water. There's already um, color coming out of it, and I'm just going to do a lot less spraying this time. Get below here. So anyway, let's see what happens. You know what? Um, just for... Why not? Because uh, I still have a lot of water. I'm going to lay this card on top and see what I've got.
Oh, that's really kind of cool. That's kind of super cool. So that's like kind of a mono print there. Let's see if there's anything left under there. Not really, but <laughs> I think I got it all on this one. So um, you can see how this could be and is super, super, super fun. Um, let's try the pigment ink. I um, gave this a good scrub up before I put it into my white ink. Uh, I don't know. I've heard this Hero Hues is good. I know I do like the Hero inks pads. I think they're very nice. And this, I've ha I have used this white and it seems perfectly good. The stays on is a bit of a pain because you have to constantly be re-inking it. And that doesn't work in my world. So let's try this. Okay, so I've got the, the my, my curiosity is because I'm wondering how much the wet, how much will reactivate. And you can see, or can you, I can see that it did reactivate a little bit. So in other words, uh, does it behave like watercolor in that you can pick it up? Now this is watercolor paper, so let me look and see. That's a really dark color. It does pick up. It does. You can pick some up. You can move it. Uh, it doesn't seem to be. I'm just gonna sort of go around and see what kind of. Yes, it does take some rewetting. So that's another interesting quality. So I'll definitely be back with more of this, but I think this is a great supply. See ya, end of thumbs up for hashtags love summer art, but keep giving me those thumbs up, folks. I really appreciate it. Leave me comments what you'd like to see in future videos. Just say hey. Bye now.